Hello YouTube and hello viewers and welcome back to another episode of our 2D side scroller tutorials. Um, in today's session we're going to look at creating our coin system uh, very similar to how the health and uh, damage system works. Uh, we're going to set up pretty much the same way. Um, however there's a little bit of a change because we can't um, use floats for our coin system so we might be using something a little bit more different this time um, but Watch this space and you'll see a nice coin system working. Now this is going to be part one of the series. Um, so we're going to get the actual coin system to work. Um, and then part two we'll be looking at, uh, for example, if you collect so many coins, you'll then get you know an extra life or, or something like that, um, which will be in part two of this episode. So without further ado, let's uh, get ourselves straight into Unreal. Um, and in our last session, what we looked at was creating our animation for our coin. So if we play the game, you'll notice that we've got our animation running there, uh, which was our coin. You can see our damage taking place and obviously our, our healing also taking place. Um, and as you can see on our HUD, we've got that part that says number of coins and then coins here, which was two text boxes that we had um, in our HUD. And so we're going to change a few things up in regards to how that works and how we're going to get that system up and running. Okay, so what we need to do is First off, we need to go into our character blueprint. And if you can't remember how to do that, we need to navigate to 2D sky, side scroller BP, go into blueprints and open up our good old character. And what we have is we obviously have our event, which is our HUD that starts here. Our health system, um, I probably didn't do this in the other tutorials. Again, I'm very sorry, I had to backtrack and um, I just put some comments in here. Um, I'll show you how to do that uh, once we finished. So once we've finished setting this all up, uh, we'll be able to sort all that information out, which is not much of a problem for us. Okay, so what we need to do is, first of all, we need to make a variable for ourselves. And that variable is going to be able to contain um, all our information about our coins. Okay, so let's create ourselves a new variable. And we're going to call this variable very similar to our health. We're just going to call this uh, char coins. I mean, you can call it whatever you like. Remember, oops, I seem to have caps lock on. Uh, char coins okay and it's not going to be a boolean because remember boolean's true or false um, we've got these things called bytes integers floats and all these sort of things what we're going to have is we're going to have an integer which is basically a whole number okay um, because we want the number values because with our health how we worked it is that it went from 0.0 to 1.0 which represented a hundred now we don't really want our coin system to go uh, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, because that's a bit silly, isn't it? I mean, why, why would you want that? You'd want it to go up in whole numbers. So in this case, if we compile and save, we can see we can give a value. So default value, we want the coins to start at zero because we want the player to collect these coins. You might have gems, you might have whatever inside your game. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to have um, coins. Uh, I mean, you could do this this principle with anything that you have in the game that you want to um, calculate on a, on, a, on a basis of, of just plus one, for example. So now we've got our, our coins here. We're going to do the very same system that we have here, where we're going to create ourselves a custom event. And this custom event, so our custom event, we're going to name this one coin system. Hey, hey what, a, what a name, hey? Coin system. And remember, we have to compile and save before we can add some inputs. And the input is going to be coin in. Okay, so we can have coin in. And that's going to be an integer, remember, not um, this one here, because we don't want to have that one. It has to be an integer. Okay. And all we're going to do is save that for now. Uh, we don't really need to do anything just yet. Um, I mean, there's no point to do anything as yet with the uh, character, because we actually need to make the blueprint first, and we need to... Uh, change things in our HUDs and, and all sorts of crazy things like that. So we can just compile and save and we're going to head over to our HUD. So let's go to our HUD folder and open up our HUD itself. Um, I think I named it something different in our one. Uh, I think I called it main UI um, on our previous tutorial. Uh, this time I've called it HUD display. Uh, it's just different names and etc. So remember with our um, progress bar that we put in, we had to attach it as a function. We're going to do the same for the coins, okay? Um, so we're actually going to bind our text 
Uh, you don't want to bind the color because that's kind of weird or, or the color uh, makes no sense. Um, but we will bind this here, which is obviously the text. We're going to bind that. I'm going to create a binding. Now remember, uh, let's just open that up. So if we have a look at the percent, you can see what we did is we cast to the 2D side scroller, um, then we targeted the health system and returned it back. We're going to do exactly the same thing for the text value, but something's going to change. Okay. So let's drag the node off and cast to um, 2D side scroller character. Okay. And our object, if you remember, is going to be get player and it's the character. Okay. So we're going to get the player character. And remember, last time when we were setting all this up with the percentage is that the cast attached to the character where we could gain access to the variable we created. And that variable we created, if you remember, was this one here, this char coins. What we attached to last time was this char health and we want to attach to char coins. So if we drag off, oh no, we don't, we don't do that. So if we get char coins, right? Notice nothing will pop up because our context sensitive is turned on. Remember, we've got to turn this off to be able to get out how many coins we actually have. So we just attach that in. So we'll attach that one into that, oops, into this node here. Okay. Now you'll notice that this value, this is an integer. And what it wants to return back is a text value. If we drag it on, it should convert that integer straight into a text node. Okay, so basically that's saying um, I can now change whatever value or number I had, and it's going to change that into a text string. So it's not going to be a number, it's just going to turn itself into text, and it's going to return it back as a value. So if we attach that up, compile. You can see everything works perfectly fine for us. I mean, everything's working fine. There's a bit of a note here. It's just saying the return node is, there's nothing really functioning on it just yet, which is not a problem. If we say play, you'll notice that the coin value has now changed to zero. It doesn't say get coins here or, or put coins here because what we say in is on our 2D side scroller character, we set the coin amount to be zero. If I change that to 50 and play, that should change to number of coins of 50. And that's something that we want. We wanted to do that. We wanted to continuously update on how many um, coins we currently have collected inside the game itself. Okay. Now let's just change that back to zero so we don't confuse anybody. Um, so we can change that value back to zero. Okay. And now all we have to do is we're not going to do anything just yet with this. Um, Actually, let's test. Um, we could test it. No, actually, let's not. Let's not test it. Let's, let's forget about that. Okay. So let's go back to our um, example map. And we're now going to make a blueprint for our coins. Now, remember, this is not going to work. Remember, I told you many, many episodes ago that when you just drag, for example, a sprite on, um, or if you drag um, a model on or, or anything onto your screen, it's not going to do anything unless it's been blueprinted into an actor. Okay. In this case, we need to make ourselves a blueprint. That's going to be our coin collection. Um, and to do that, we right click and we're going to create a blueprint class. And remember, it's always going to be an actor. And we're going to name this BP underscore coins. Very simple name. All right. BP underscore coins. Double click on the blueprint and now things are slightly different because what we previously done is with our pumpkin and with our heart, they've been very static images, all right? They, they, they haven't changed. The sprites are very solid. They don't move. In this case, we want to attach our flipbook to our blueprint. And it's very simple. It's exactly the same route that we go, but instead of adding a component called a sprite, okay, which is a, a, a static sprite, we can actually add a flipbook book. Okay. So we can add a flip book into this and the flip book we want to add is what we created, which is the coin. Very easy. That's how easy it is to do things now in unreal. Um, from our static sprites that we had, we can now attach flip books uh, into our scenes to obviously add that bit of detail into our game. 
Okay. Now, if you didn't see what I did there, all I did was I dragged the flipbook into the node so we get rid of that little circle sphere, which is a bit annoying to be honest. Our next step is to add a collision. Okay, so we're going to add a sphere collision this time because obviously a coin is round. Okay, we're going to go to our front view and we're just going to manipulate the sphere on the radius and we're going to drop that down so it fits around our coin. So that looks okay. Uh, let's have a look again in perspective. Yeah, that seems to cover our coin. It's a little bit out, but again, for the tutorial series, I'm not going to be very specific on where I'm going to place it and how good it looks. Okay. So now that's the coin done. Now we just need to tell it to do something. Okay. And it's very, very easy. So remember, if we ever wanted to collide, we make sure we choose our collision. We navigate down in our details and we're going to go to on begin overlap. Okay, so this one here, on component begin overlap. I'm going to click on the plus and it's pretty much exactly the same process that we did with our health and our damage system. We're going to cast to our 2D side scrolling character. Okay, where our object is going to be get player character. Okay, so we're going to get our player character. And what we do here now is we're going to do the system of how we did our health and etc. So just to remind you, okay, so to remind you how that worked, is that let's open up our health system. So all we did is we called that event. All right, so we called the event, we told how much we want to go in. All right, and then we just destroyed it. Okay, it's exactly the same thing with our point system. Okay, whoopsie, that not meant to show. Um, so our coin system, I don't know why that's now disappearing. Uh, coin system. Hello. My map seems to be broken. Coin system. That doesn't seem to be in there, so let's put that in. All right, so our coin system. So we need to find that function. Now remember the func... Uh, no, sorry, not function. The event. And the event is called coin system. So let's go and get our coin system. So coin system. There he is there. So coin system. And we want to tell it how many coins do we want to go in? Well, we want one coin because it's only a one coin collection. Now, if you maybe had like a super coin, right? If you had a super coin, you could say maybe 20. Okay. It's again entirely up to you um, how you want to allocate your coin system or gem system or, or whatever type of system you have. Okay. And then the last thing we need to do is then just destroy our actor because we don't want it to be there because that would be a bit of a cheat that it'll just stay there forever. So we're going to destroy our actor and that's pretty much it. So if we file and save and play, there's nothing there because I haven't put the blueprint in, but you can imagine if I put the blueprint in now, it wouldn't do anything. Um, it would send this to the coin system and say, okay, well, there's one there, but what are we going to do with that one? Okay. And that's where we have to go back into our 2D side scroller blueprint. And we have to do the same type of system that we've done here. So we're going to drag the node off. I'm going to set our coins, All right? So we're going to set our coins. Now it's not, obviously it's going to be set to zero because that's what it currently was. Okay. So we can just leave that there for now, but we want to get this one. So we're going to get our coins. You could either drag it or you could type it. Uh, so you could I say get coins if you wanted to. Um, it's exactly the same thing, whichever's preference to you. I mean, that's fine. Okay. And now all we're going to do is drag off this node. No, negative. We're not going to do that one. Drag off this node. I'm going to say plus. I'm going to say integer plus integer. Okay. And we're going to plus the coins. Okay. Oh, these are the wrong way around. Dope. That one needs to go down there and that one needs to go into there. Okay. So we're going to say how many coins we have. So here's how many we've got plus whatever coins we've gathered from the coin system. And we're going to plug that into there. Okay. Now what that should do is if we compile and play, oh, that's not going to work. Silly Wayne, right? Is we need to drag our coins onto the system. So our blueprint like so. Okay. Now, if we play it, our coin is now rotating. If I now walk into that coin, notice that it increases by one. So if I started putting a lot of coins into my level, so we just throw a few in. 
and play, I should be able to pick up each coin that I have inside my map. Now, as I say in our next tutorial that we'll look at, is we'll look at how do we set that so if we get so many coins, we could maybe do something um, in regards to our game or or um, our character, or we could give them weapons or, or something. Um, we could we could see what, what what we can do in regards to that. Okay, so just a reminder, what we did is our very first thing we had to look at was we had to create this variable here called char coins. And remember, it's an integer, not a float. Okay, it's very important that um, because floats work with decimals, integers are whole numbers. So we wanted to make sure that it was an integer. Okay, we then created our custom event, which was really important because remember the custom event holds the data that we're working with. All right, then we went into our HUD. Okay, so we went to our HUD and in our HUD, we clicked on where our coin section was going to be and we binded our text. All right, so we binded our text area. All right. We then, in our text section, we created our cast to our character to gather the coins, all right? So we can update the HUD to the amount of coins that we currently have, all right? So that's always going to update the HUD, and that's really important. Without this, the HUD wouldn't update. It would just say, get coins here, okay? Then what we did is we created a blueprint. We added a flipbook, okay? So we added the paper flipbook. We added a collision sphere because we needed the collision. Okay. Once we added the collision, we then cast it again to the character. We added the coin system where we were going to add one coin for each coin that got picked up in the blueprint. Okay. Once the coin was collected, we then destroyed the actor because we don't want it to be there anymore. So we destroyed that actor. And then for the system to work, we had to go back into our 2D side scroll of the character and we just had to do a little bit of math, all right, where we just said with the system, um, with however amount of coins we've already got in our variable, we're going to add how many coins are coming in and then we're just going to reset our coins. So it just works in this little loop, all right? So it'll find out how many coins add, coins add, coins add. Now I did say to you, I'm going to show you how to make a comment and it's really easy. Select what you want, i.e. this, press C on the keyboard, and now we can just call this coin system. And now you can quite easily move these around quite easily. Now, this is going to get bigger because we're going to do this compare soon, all right, in our next episode, um, which will show us how do we um, add lives and, and things like that into our system. Again, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Wayne, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, on creating the coin system. Remember, you can do this with anything. It doesn't just have to be coins. It could be, uh, as I say, gems. It could be um, whatever. I mean, it, it could be whatever you want in regards to whatever you want to collect uh, and display on your HUD. So, in our as I said, next episode, we'll look at um, creating our live systems and stuff like that. And I hope you really enjoyed this one. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much. Don't forget, like, subscribe, um, and share with your friends. Thank you very much.